no space or underscore or anything like that. What about your name? Does that have space in it? No. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of text in school from my family saying that was a bad run. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it should just be a two hour estimate. Yeah. Cleaning up a bit? Good, but at least getting my stuff out of that. Are you leaving soon? We're staying till Wednesday. No, no, I'm actually not leaving till Wednesday, but right. I just want to gather up all my stuff. Mm -hmm. use it again, I'll pull it out. <laughs> Should Mike say if he was going upstairs to say? I haven't seen Mike since I came down, so I don't know. Didn't they go out to eat? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to figure out how to get you there. Um, actually, so he's taking care. Okay. I don't know. You're gonna need cool Maddie's truck. Me, uh, just big enough for all my stuff and nothing else. Like there's nothing in his truck. He's got a pretty big truck. So. So this is a really fun game, in my opinion. It doesn't need to be quite that loud. Although I do need to be able to hear my gather ability. Is everything set up? Okay. So, uh, three, two, one. Go. So the basic premise of this game is that there's this magic book about water called Aquaticus, who gets taken over by an inky substance called the Influence, or Goop. Oh, that was early. Oh well. But uh, so the Goop traps his power into these rainbow drops and. You're not actually controlling anything, you're just a player that's tilting the book left and right and letting gravity do its work with this water. And there's a lot of sections in this tutorial where it's very picky about how much water you have in the next area before it'll start scrolling text. So. Occasionally, I'll just pull all of my water into one spot just to be certain, but later on, it will be all bets off for where my water goes. But this game uh, is on WiiWare. It's uh, downloaded from the Nintendo shop or whatever. And it was on uh, Club Nintendo for 100 coins a while back, I believe. And it's one of the few games, I believe, that uh, uses motion controls really well. And there's a slight couple tricks coming up. I can do this in one shot, usually. Uh, that was a little too early. This is one of those picky areas where it requires you to have a lot of your water, and if you have even a little bit left behind, it may not continue the text. Uh, that might have been too much, but right there I'm just trying to skip the text telling you about jumping, and here if I get this early enough, it skips a text about cogs and 
pretty much there's a lot of missions in the game where you just take X to Y to complete it. And COGS are an example of that. game has a few, like four chapters into it, but they're each their own uh, world with a couple of pages to them that I can just travel at my own leisure. They're not like individual levels. either. Ugh. Uh, on this one I just normally need to get enough water over here to open this last door. And I'm gonna go into the settings here and turn on steep angles, which, uh, of course, make the angles steeper for turning left and right, which I think allows water to flow faster. And also, I think, lets me attack several enemies in one cycle, like this guy down here. And that was a rainbow flower that I just hit. There's a certain amount on each page, and if you hit them all, then uh, you get a free rainbow drop, which I'll be doing a lot of. Oh, guys, it's such a troll. Also, a lot of extra content, such as uh, jigsaw puzzles in this game, which I won't be focusing on collecting any of. And any I do get are purely accidental. is enough to open up this door at the top. And there, if you have a rainbow drop that spawns during a cutscene, if water is touching it during the cutscene, it will automatically collect it and skip the animation for it. Which I'm not given too many chances to do that in this run. But it also works that when you get a rainbow drop that's kind of off screen, it will also skip the animation. And I'm going to especially avoid this particular uh, jigsaw because that one has text associated with it. first four rainbow drops are always the same, because they're the only ones that I'm allowed to get. But after I get this next one, I get my first ability in the game, 
called Gather, which is really useful. So right here, I'm gonna take some damage intentionally. Because I want to have a small amount of water for this next part. Like earlier where uh, the game only wanted to continue when I had a certain amount of my uh, water in an area. This game also counts the percentage of the total pool that you have. So in this bucket here, I just need to get a certain amount of the water I have on screen into that bucket for it to drop. And if I had more water than that, then it would take maybe two or three cycles of me trying to put water into it. So Gather is pretty much one of the most broken abilities in this game. Because the idea of it is that all of your water, when you use it, will gather to the spot that you have the most water. So wherever your biggest pool is, that's where all of your water wants to travel to. And in addition, I can also explode and get my water some extra distance. And I can do this in the air, or any time that I'm not inside a pipe. And I can also mash the one button, and I can delay my charge so that I can keep all of my water in one spot and still not explode randomly. And if I'm really quick here in the beginning of this area, then I can usually get a quick kill on all four of these guys. And now the game starts to open up a bit more. It's also kind of like uh, Mario 64 where you have to get like X number to beat the game, but there's also a bunch of extra ones you can find too? Yes. Okay. Pretty much I just aim to get the quickest ones that I can find and do them in an order that makes them faster depending on what abilities I get when. I need 55 Rambo drops and access to uh, chapter 4 in order to uh, face the final area in this game. Which in this game, there's not exactly bosses, there's just areas with a lot of enemies that I'm supposed to kill. Oh. I tried to do a wall jump there, and I failed miserably. Pretty much the game considers anything that's close to being flat or a hill as floor. So, when I jump onto a wall, when I'm slanted, or tilting the screen, it will register some walls as floors and it will give me a second jump. Which, on some occasions, lets me get to places where I'm not either, either not supposed to get to or would take an extraordinary amount of time in comparison to get to. And 
And there's a lot of puzzles in this game, and there's a lot of intended solutions, and there's quite a few unintended solutions that I managed to figure out. I'm gonna hit this rainbow drop here, or this rainbow flower, because I'm here, and it'll say it's basically a free rainbow drop once I hit all the others. Aw. The gear moved to the worst possible spot. Occasionally, I can leave some water in the top section and have the gear come to me when I come back up, but. Sometimes it goes awry. These books that uh, appear, they're basically warp points from page to page, and sometimes within the same page, that make it really handy for A, getting from one place to another, and B, for tricking some of the uh, puzzles. Tilting left and right, you know, I've already seen that you just shake the Wiimote up and down to jump, basically. But in an interview that Curve uh, Studios used to, or made, they made mention that the jump mechanic was actually the hardest to program. Because of how the Wiimote gyros work. They didn't go into, like, super details, it's just that, uh, I guess going an, uh, an up-down motion versus a flailing motion is probably what the issue is, that just, so that a specific action caused you to jump rather than just accidentally moving the Wiimote, which is also why I play with, uh, a normal Wiimote, rather than a Wii Motion Plus, because it's so sensitive. That on occasion, it would, when I tried practicing with it, it would just do inputs that I didn't even realize I was making out of the slightest movements one way or another. Uh, 
I can just wait and ride this up. Usually what I do after I hit that last platform is just jump over to this last one. And that only costs a few seconds or so. So I've got nine rainbow drops now, which unlocks the first Heart of Influence area, but I'm not going to go there yet because it's just easier right now for me to collect a couple more before I head, head on to chapter two. Because all that chapter two has to offer me right now is the ice ability, which I don't really particular need or can use to my knowledge. These goops, uh, they are vulnerable during their animations of both turning their flames on and off. But once the animation is done, they are invincible and they will hurt me. In the first Heart of Influence area, you might see me do a couple of times where it seems like they should be damaging me, but they are still vulnerable. Oh, too early. so that it evaporates. If I separate my pools of water into two large enough chunks, the camera likes to try and pick both of them up, which will cause it to just stay in the middle between the two. had done that fast enough, I would have been able to just jump back while the bridge was receding. So now I have 11 and I'm going to actually go do the Heart of Influence room. which is basically just a, a big puzzle in itself. This first one's not so bad, but the second, third, and fourth chapters have enemies that have to be done in certain orders after you hit certain switches and 
do certain things to open up doors and whatnot. Nah, I'm good. here because the camera has to pan down and occasionally if I try and take that too fast he will still be invincible for a really long time and I'll have almost no chance of avoiding him. There we go. Like I said, the, they're vulnerable during their animations. Yeah, they have to actually complete their animation, and they're even uh, vulnerable maybe a frame or two afterwards. So chapter two is probably like the sluggish, or most sluggish of the chapters. Aside from chapter 4, which I hardly touch, just because the puzzles by that time are so long, they're just not worth doing in a speedrun. Oh. Pretty much anywhere where it has those, uh, oh, yeah, uh, those little pits, uh, I can transform into ice now, such as the one that I was spawned at in this chapter. But before I finish chapter 13, I now have the ice ability, I'm gonna take a little detour. drops. Oh, took that a little slow, so I'm gonna wait till it's not invincible. get introduced to lava, which in this case, the bright lava instantly kills me once I touch it, so I'm going to take this area a little safe. Whereas the darker lava just damages me. You'll see in my uh, life counter 
in the top left that the main vial has a couple of markings on it and every time I get hit by lava it will mark me down one of those. And my ice will actually get smaller as well. Which I abuse a little later on. dabbled with the Wii U, so I'm not sure if it plays a old uh, WiiWare on it or not. for this, but I call this one a slam dunk. Just like with piracy, right? Yeah. Every time somebody steals a game, it was $60. <laughs> That's exactly how it works. It's bad. to the left here once I get to the bottom because during cutscenes where they point out enemies they still are allowed to uh, go through their cycles and then this particular one it's a furnace and if I go to it right now it uh, will not be burning by the time I get over there if I were to do it after this one though then it would, I would have to wait for it. And there's a pretty hard 
jump here. That got semi consistent sometimes. Got it. That pretty much just skips the uh, two platforms to the side and saves 30 seconds or so. And I don't need to activate that other platform that was over there since I can make that longer jump without it. Which saves another 30 or so seconds from the cutscene that would play. And normally I'd have to go underneath this level, get an orange cog, and go up through some levels, but I just explode and hit the rainbow drop. Because as long as any of my water hits the rainbow drop, it completes the level. Yeah, that. Yeah, that couch seems to have an effect on people like that. <laughs> Good night, blue glass. There, there was a nice wall jump. Didn't really save anything since I still had to wait for this platform. So, there aren't just, uh, take item to other place puzzles in this game. There's also a couple escort missions and also a couple where it's just get through the puzzle to the end type. And there's a lot of actual variety and creativity in some of these puzzles. Unfortunately, I try to break through as many of them as I can. And there's no real sequence breaking, unfortunately, yet, because, uh, I apologize for this one, too, but there's really solid, uh, programming in this game. It, with water physics, I think you have to be uh, well aware of, uh, like, where your walls are and how solid objects are. And as of yet, I haven't found anything to break through any walls in particular. Oh, no, no, no. So yeah, this pressure doesn't do anything to water or cloud forms, which I get later. And right now I'm just skipping, turning into ice to get this cog up here by just balancing on the platform. Because when you have an item and you freeze it, you can take it anywhere and you won't lose it, but you have to melt at some point in order to put it where it belongs. So now I get the third ability in this game, which is stick allows me in ice form to stick to objects and it's really handy for some areas but I don't find too much use in it other than where it's required. Ah, I'm not gonna make it up there. If I had made it up to the top before this platform pushed me down. These walls were closed and I could have skipped a couple of things. At some point, I'm going to... I might forget my route. But luckily, I have it on my phone. And can look it up. I've done a lot of uh, recent updates to my route. 
switching things around, so I'm not completely... I haven't completely memorized it yet. And this is one of the changes I made. I used to do this one earlier without stick, which was a pain, but now I can pretty much go the fastest uh, path possible through this maze. Does stick only work when you're nice? Yes. Because, uh, I guess, like, uh, if you were to try and lick a flagpole and below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or something, your tongue would stick to it kind of like that. Aside from the ones that particularly require it, I don't use stick that much. Because although it's useful, by the time I get cloud, it's not going to matter. this book. I don't really use it except for one instance because there's a trick coming up a little later where uh, the game saves pretty much automatically whenever you do anything of importance such as hit a rainbow flower. So on occasion you can just hit a rainbow flower just hit a rainbow flower, it saves automatically so you can exit the level and everything will be hunky-dory. And you can go on to the next one. little skip here. If I can get it. Yeah. Where I don't have to go through the intended way, I can just hop right onto that platform and get myself up. I believe right about now is where I head towards the left page. Occasionally I have to pop up some inclines because of gravity. Oh, mess that up. Occasionally I can get onto the far side of the platform to gain distance since I have to wait for it anyways. So I'll just take it safe here and get right on it. platform doesn't activate until uh, I'm completely on it, which is annoying. So 
I'm gonna do this bottom one first because if I go towards the left and the top one first, sometimes it doesn't like to start the gears that move around and it makes it a little difficult to actually get through. Although I found a quicker path that I might take that uh, just goes underneath and takes a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. about uh, those breakable walls I'm going through, they're not all cooperative. It takes a certain amount of uh, uh, speed and force to actually make it break. So if I don't come at it from a certain distance or speed, it will sometimes not break and that can be annoying because there are a couple breakable walls later on that I have to rely on something else breaking. instead of my block of ice. And that can troll me sometimes. first uh, droplet puzzle that I do, and this is probably the easiest one there is, which just has seven droplets scattered around the level, and once I collect all of them, then uh, the rainbow drop appears. Unfortunately, these first two, I have to... Oh, did drop too early. I have to wait for platform. So here, I don't need to... jump up and over like I did before, since... I have stick and I can just go up the other way. There we go. Earlier, it, uh, I somehow could not break that top wall even though I clearly have enough speed and power to do so. I'm going to do the second part of Influence now, and this one starts to really pound in the puzzle aspect. Whereas before, it was just a bunch of enemies that I could beat in any order that I wished. 
This one has a bunch of gears that will only spin in certain directions. Oh, really? I did that for health safety reasons. Oh no. Since uh, the Heart of Influence levels look really weird in that they give you a checkpoint every time that you kill a goop. So, occasionally, if you die after killing certain groups, it will put you in good positions, and occasionally it will put you in, or respawn you in very awkward positions. And I abuse that in the later ones, but right now, I'm not too confident in it where it will put me after each phase. Also be a bit trolly depending on where he is in his cycle when I get around to him. Not bad. I skip a bunch of text about the cloud and its abilities and raining by just turning into water before it wants me to. And the trigger for starting this next section is just hitting that rainbow flower. And I also, in addition to getting cloud, I also have the gust ability where I can suck up balloons, which can attach to objects. Um, I turned the Wiimote, uh, I inverted the controls so that I turn it this way to go up and this way to go down. Oh, okay. And left and right work normally as well. Okay. Um, but that's one half of the broken speed combo. Because, um, in a few more drops I'm going to get the gust ability, which I can actually blow wind. And if I blow wind in the opposite direction that my cloud is going, 
I get a pretty decent speed boost. And it requires quite a bit of coordination to be able to think, okay, I'm going right, so I need to press left. Only fireballs. Always coming for me. Oh, he missed me. Um, they have a cycle. It's just oh no. It's just depending on when I get to it. So I'm exiting here because. That rainbow drop actually spawned back towards the warp. So because I earlier took a few moments to get the rainbow drop in that ice maze, that rainbow drop was just a hop, skip, and jump away. Okay. I believe now I go back to chapter three. Yep. For a long, long time. So how many drops are there total? You said you get 55? There are, I need 55 to get to open up the Heart of Influence in Chapter 4, and there's 89 total in the game. Okay. Odd number there. It is an odd number, and I don't know why it's not 90. 89 is good enough. Ship it. I think it mostly has to do with the size of the puzzles that they wanted. Because in Chapter 4, a lot of the puzzles are ridiculously large and complicated. So it's probably more so that they wanted to stick in that high difficulty curve. And 89 was just the number they ended up with and were happy with. In fact, that there's so much you can do in this game that you can get that much for a, a ten dollar game basically. Yeah, that's that a that's a, a lot of content. So when routing chapter three, the the basic idea I was going for was that since I'm going to get a gust ability which makes me go super fast with the cloud later on. I tried to do all the short bursts of cloud rainbow drops first. Oh, that pink gear was just out of reach. So now I'm gonna have to sit here a moment and wait for that cog to get where it's supposed to go. opens up this tiny area under here. So let's, I think, I believe this next one is a pretty odd fish puzzle. But it also shows off how like complicated some of these puzzles can be, just trying to figure it out normally, versus how if you take out all the unnecessary steps, how simple some of these solutions can be. hitting this warp here because I'm just going to use it again to hit a couple more rainbow flowers and then work back and do the same thing with the auto save later on because there's nothing over here that's worth like the time required to solve it. 
And the switch here is one of the more interesting things, is that you have to get enough water in there to make, to connect a current, which is also one of the buggier switches, I think, because it can uh, alternate between raising and lowering that platform. Also, in these missions, if uh, the object you're carrying lands in lava, you automatically lose a life. So I have to be wary of that big gear-looking thing in the center that's moving up and down. Because it is solid and it can obstruct my water, and it can knock a goldfish into the lava. And I will have fried fish for dinner. I'm a little surprised those fish can survive that long. Oh, that was close. <laughs> uh, fish are actually one of the more interesting things. They're pretty much exactly like the rubber duckies, where you have to get them from point A to point B. Only if you leave a fish by itself after collecting it, it will get a timer on it for being a fish out of water, and if that timer runs out, then the fish dies. And that's another interesting aspect about the game. Fluidity also came out with a sequel recently for 3DS download called Fluidity Spin Cycle, which is actually a really interesting game because instead of this free world nonsense that they have here, they switch to an, an individual level format with actual bosses at the end of each chapter. But in addition, it makes use of uh, a 360 degree uh, turn radius. So uh, you can actually flip the level completely upside down. And I'm not sure whether it uses the camera or the pedometer gyros in the 3DS to do so, but I still think it's quite amazing that they took uh, the motion concept from this WiiWare title and managed to put it into a completely handheld system. And that they could also flip the entire level 360 degrees upside down, left, right. So now I have the gust ability and this is going to completely break the speed barrier for this game. to do things really quickly and like this maze coming up or it's not quite a maze but there's a lot of places that can damage me it takes a bit of getting used to to be able to move quickly and efficiently there for a second to make sure that that cog gets where it's supposed to because if it falls off of that platform then I'm pretty much screwed and have to do that over again because until I get the squirt ability I am unable to uh, uh, lift objects up without a balloon
And I have a few more drops to go before I unlock the Heart of Influence here. But unlike the other two levels, I'm going to instantly go for it, because that will give me the last ability in this game, Squirt. Which makes a lot of the earlier levels particularly easier. Whereas they were uh, made with the idea that you were just going to be water by that point. Uh, using Squirt in them pretty much takes out most of the puzzle aspects. goes straight towards the ending. <laughs> well, when you're a cloud, that's the only way you can fight back. So here, I have a creative solution. Where normally you'd have to spend maybe about 10 or so turns turning these things. I skip about half of them by just doing some creative stuff with this rubber ducky. all around and there. I got it relatively quickly. <laughs> nice. Off screen. Yeah. As I mentioned before, when you get a rainbow drop off screen, it saves time because it doesn't do its full animation. seems to pop the balloon I pick up from up here. And I usually have to wait a cycle or two, depending on when I come in here. As soon as that balloon hits that pin, the balloon pops, and I have to go collect another one. The balloon's infinitely respawn, so it's all good. But this does put me in an awkward position, trying to get underneath this guy without popping it. All right. And I could change it into water right here, but that wouldn't uh, be faster because I still have to wait for my cloud to completely rain out all of my water supply before I gain control of it. Alright, and now I'm gonna do my favorite, favoritest rainbow drop just because of how creatively simple this solution is when you think about it. So normally, you drop down into this area down here, and you automatically touch that fish. Well, nope. 
So there I just skipped about two steps of going in back and forth and transforming. But not only that, but it is actually quite difficult without Squirt to get this fish out of this pit. So now I just slide right in. This is probably the second most uh, difficult stage in the game for a speedrun. Not only are there a lot of flying enemies, but there's also a lot of scoop um, mist. Which can be trolly and slow you down at the same time. I'm gonna try to abuse uh, damage. Here in a moment. So it's okay that I got hit there. There's a balloon down here that ordinarily I'd have to come through the other side and blow around, but... Because I get smaller as I lose health, I can just slip right in here, get this balloon. Oh, come on. Come here. There we go. I may have missed this before. Is the color of the fog significant at all? Yes. You see that uh, the purple arrow and the purple outline? First thing I'm gonna do is kill this guy, because I'm at such low health and he can snipe me. So you see this moving platform has a pin on it, but I don't actually have to pop this balloon. I just have to let go of it so that the weight hits that switch. Okay, still down there. 